Now, this is a, the fly I'm going to be tying. Now, this is a badger matuka. This is a pattern I tied, must be more than... It's been a long time since I tied it anyway. Uh, not long, I can hardly remember. It must be more than 15 plus years ago since I tied one of these. Now, I have tied the Ace of Spades, which is a matuka winged fly. Now, the matuka wing, uh, winged type flies is New Zealand they came from. Uh, as far as I believe, the matuka bird was the, the the feathers were used from that, and that's where the name came from. I could be wrong, but that's if you look on the internet, you'll see lots of information on this fly. But the badger matuka is a pattern I've been asked, well, I don't know many times to tie. Now this is a version that I tied. Now, there is different. There's a silver bodied version. There's a, even a pearly body, red. Uh, but the badger wing is still there. This has got a black chenille body, which is the original one that I tied. Now I'm using a standard lure hook. This is size eight. Just a classic style lure hook. Uh, thread I'm going to be using is Uni Thread 8 in Black. I'm just going to run the wax through to get it started. It's a simple fly. I mean, there's basically three materials. You've got your, well, four if you couldn't the thread, like. So you've got your thread, black chenille, oval silver tinsel for the rib, and badger hackles for the wing and for the, the throat. Now, what we're going to do is put a layer of thread down, as I say. Right, start at this point. Now, on the way down, I'm actually going to tie in my oval tinsel. You can do this or you can do it. It just makes it easier to tie it on the way down. I have an oval tinsel. There's plenty of grip. And I normally like to tie it on the side. And I'm going to wind this down until I reach the barb of the hook. So, I mean, when I let the thread go, it should be in line with the barb. Now, chenille I'm using is an old black chenille, just standard chenille. You could use a suede chenille if you want. You can even use dubbing, it's up to yourself. Uh, or even a wool would be ideal. Now, I've obviously taken away some of the fibre from the chenille. That's the core I'm tying in to make it easier. Take this thread back up. Now, I'm going to stop it around about 3 mil or 4 mil from the eye, about there. Now, I'm just going to wind up nice body with the chenille. Just take your time, nice and tight. To this point, cross your thread. Turn that away. Now, wax on my thread. And you tidy the head area up. Don't be shy ahead on this fly, you want to give the impression of a head. Now that's a good impression of a fry type pattern. So say you can fish it any time. It's a great, it's an old style, but it's a really good style. Now the hackles I'm going to be using, I'm going to use it from a Brahma rooster neck. This is the Panja neck here. The, you could use a hen. It's just an ordinary chain, Chinese hen, cock, whatever you want to. This is a hen one. Um, this, I believe it or not, this is an Indian hen. Now you could use that, it'll still work just the same, but I'm going to use the hen hackle for the front. But I'm going to use these well marked badger caught net hackles. Now I've taken two from either side of the gate so that they, they naturally curve towards one another and curve with the shape of the hook. So I take two from the left side and two from the right side. Now I'm just going to line up the ends. Check the length, just check. Tips have lined up. Get my other two. Again, a wee bit fiddly this, but just take your time. Make sure the tips have lined up, then I want them to put them together. As I say, just take your time getting these to be the, the right length. Just keep bringing them together, check. That looks okay. Now, for the length, what I'm looking to do, and I want a tail length, but the length of the hook, so that over the back. So there's a complete length of the hook, so there's my measure. Takes it to about here. I want that to hang over the back. So, what I then do is, finger and thumb on my left hand in this case, I tear back, I pull back a space, but keeping really tight hold of the wing. So I know that's the area I'm going to tie in. 
Again, make sure the tips have lined up, you're okay with that. Double check, that looks okay. And then keep that nice, a really tight hold, we can then tear away fibres from top and bottom, revealing the stem, so you can tie it on. Now, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to take away fibres from the underside of the feathers, so that it sits better on the, the chenille. So then again, I hold my tail length, which is there. Hold it tight, and then take away the fibres on the underside. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but close to the back where you're going to tie it in. Just take your time. Again, make sure these are lined up. It's fine. Check my length. Happy with the length, then we can tie these straight on. Pinch and loop on the top. A good three or four turns, making sure it's not going to move. Just check your wing, and if it's slightly out, we can always correct that. And we wind up our tinsel, which is going to secure in the, the wing of the fly. That looks okay. Trim this away. It's important that you wax your thread, or even if you want to put a wee tiny bit of super glue on that, so that they don't pull out. It's got a nice head, nice base of thread down for the head and build up that shape. Yeah, I'm just checking these are the same length. Okay, now you start off a half turn at the back, bring these down, open out the fibres to where you're going to actually tie this in. So you lift this up, make a space for your rib. Now I'm going to first turn or so, it's going to be straight, but don't go any further, don't pull any fibres back from further down, you want to keep them. Okay, now let me catch that in. Check it's sitting okay. We can always go back at this point if we're not happy. Just check everything's sitting the way you want. And then it's just a matter of ribbing the fly. Make a space for your rib to come up through. You're looking around five to six turns or so. Keep going. Space right at this point here. Nice and tight. Come underneath. Follow up with your thread. 90 degree bend into your oval tinsel and then screw it in two or three turns. But before we do anything else, I'm just going to check and see how things are sitting. Ribs okay. Got a couple of fibres here at the back. So I'm just going to trim them away. So you can see the nice marking of the badger hackle. A couple on this side, so I'm taking them away. Don't have to do this. Don't do sometimes too fussy. Ah, that'll do it. Once you're happy, as I say, you can then throw away the excess, tidy the head area up. Okay, and I'm going to put some wax on my thread. Come up towards the eye, come back up. Then we tie in a hackle, and we use the hen, this Indian hen. Oh yeah, you want it reasonably marked, so... Length of the hackle fibre, it's short or as long as you like. Tighten by the tip. Now you could use the same hackle. I'm just going to use the hen, it's a wee bit softer, a wee bit, a wee bit more mobile. So I'm going to reveal the tip of the, the hackle. Catch it on the side, two or three turns. Now I'm looking at the front of the hackle, so I'm drawing back the tip, tucking it in, slip my fingers back, there's the tip of the, the hen hackle, I can pull that away. And then we want some nice straight turns. Now I'm just folding the fibres back, just slightly drawing my finger, finger and thumb through, and then we want nice straight turns. You can use your hackle pliers if you want. And then stroke the fibres as we wind. Now you're looking three to four turns. And you're happy. Just come up, follow up with your thread. Bend the hackle so you've got a 90 degree bend. Screw it in with two or three turns. That will get you straight into the stem. And then what we can do is trim away the waste. 
You may miss one or two fibres like I have. All you have to do is just stroke them back, thread to the eye, work your way up, forming a nice head, and then when you whip finish. Now you could put jungle cock eyes on this, you could paint eyes on the head, you could put adhesive eyes on it, but I'm just keeping it as it, the original fly I tied. Just a plain one. Give me a quick look. Now, if you can look here, you'll see the Matuka type wing. Uh, you've got a nice shape, so you've got a, a minnow type shape in the body. It's just lovely. It's a fly we should fish more if we're representing. It's a fry. Uh, as I say, I put an eye on it. It does really lift it a wee bit, but as a plane, this is a standard badger matuka. Body, is a, body colours can be different now. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a wee touch for speed, I'm putting super glue on. Now be careful, just touch the head. I'm using the, the full mill, which is the brush version, which is easy to apply. And I've tapered the brush as you can see. Just use a Stanley blade to cut it. Now allow that to dry. Now two coats of varnish and then that's it. And basically that's that's your Matuka part. Uh, it's a lovely style, a great fun fly to tie. Um, I'm going to tie two or three for myself and just, just to have. Now, you've got a nice shiny head, bead like head and it looks apart. And it swims extremely well. Now a good version of this is to use grey on the top, just the grey feathers. So it could be hen or cock. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that and that's uh, Badger Matuka. Okay.